Hey guys, it's Justin and Joe with Tuning Tuesday, episode 54. Um, still doing this short intro thing. Let me know how you guys like the short intro versus our long intro before. Um, so, PRI this week. For Dude. those that don't know, Performance Racing Industries show, kind of like the, the race car version of SEMA. Race car version of SEMA. Mm -hmm. We've been building our own race car for PRI for the second year in a row. Yep. <laughs> and I was just uh, just telling everybody how much different it was than it when it went last year. It's a totally new freaking car, as you found out. Yep. Um, Joe was assembling the bright pink rear end on Saturday, mm -hmm. powder coated pink pink, mm -hmm. not purple pink, mm -hmm. pink pink this time. Mm -hmm. So that's been. Um, my nights and evenings for the last uh, two weeks or so with Kenny and Rebecca in the old shop. So we got a whole video that we're producing about the latest update on Rebecca's car. And she can actually tell you more about that um, live from PRI on Thursday at four o'clock instead of six o'clock. Um, okay. <clears throat> I wanted everybody to know that. we gotta be out of the show at six or is it five? Five, the show closes and they start turning the lights off. Yeah, I remember so, that. I'm afraid that like people start covering up displays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this week burnout box is going to be early, so you can get the benefit of seeing the PRI show with the lights still on. <laughs> nice, nice. So, you just start taking questions. Yeah. About all do the we, things and stuff. Do we have any questions yet? So, we're having a little difficulties, I and mean, Kristen are actually are typing back and forth. It looks like the Facebook feed is down. Oh. Okay. So we that were just in here trying to decide, should we try and do a quick reboot and see if it comes up since we're just starting the program? Um, or did you want to continue with just YouTube? It looks like he's doing a quick reboot. Okay. We'll reboot. I'm checking the internet speed on that rebooting yet. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so we'll right now at this now. point we're... Live. Hi, everybody. Um, so Slab Shack on YouTube is saying nice intro. Jay says, hey guys and gals. Mad Max says, hi all, love the show. And Nutty says, hi guys. So just that. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Let us sort through these technical details real quick and we will get going again. Coyote Chris says, sups peeps. Hey. What's up? This is a part of the struggle when doing live stuff though. <laughs> Slab Shack yeah. says, the intro's too fast for Facebook server. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> There's a lot of things that are too fast for Facebook. The new short intro. So what you gonna do tonight? N N Mad Max wants to know uh, how long will it take uh, for Joe and his crew to update all custom tombs for all Gen 3 that were purchased? <laughs> Forever. Yeah. We're staying... We're, I'm assuming he means busy. for Black Friday. That's what I'm guessing. We sold a lot of Gen 3s. Um, but we'll get, I mean, they're, based on the statistics you gave us earlier, you guys are really staying on top of tuning. Yeah, we're staying on top of it, but you know how the whole wait three weeks to install a blower and then you get the rush of oh, I 20 need my... guys asking for tunes at the same day. Yeah. Because so, half the guys will tell us, oh, it's just a blower kit. Then like a week later they'll be like, oh, I added this, 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 and this. And it's like, all right, well, start again. So request your tune early <clears throat> and tell us everything that's done to the car. And if you tell us when you need it by, we'll try to meet that expectation. Yeah, that and uh, try and get us the info. Like if you already had a device, get us the serial number of your device. If you if you didn't provide your VIN at the time of purchase, provide your VIN. Um, Got to get us that info if you're going to get your tune. Relevant info exactly. is very important. Irrelevant info. What springs you're running? What mm -hmm. drive shaft you're running? Yeah. You know... Um, yeah, but definitely relevant info makes jo Joe and his uh, team's uh, job a lot easier and quicker. So you get a better result um, more promptly. Yeah, if we've asked for engine bay photos, get us engine bay photos. If we've asked you for uh, how you have your fuel system set up, tell us. Um, Why do you want pictures of my engine bay? <clears throat> People think they know what they have, but I find that at least half the time they actually don't. I don't have. A, I have a stock fuel system. Why is there a fuel pressure regulator sitting over there? <laughs> or uh, I have a JLT-123, and it's a res delete. Chris, oh, how, that's how's, how's it going one. over yeah. there? Uh, I'm trying to do some research. I got nothing. 
Okay. No, we'll just keep on keeping on we, with YouTube. Yeah, then. why don't we go ahead, we'll keep it on YouTube. We'll let Max, will you put a notice on Facebook letting people to know to go over to YouTube? Yeah. YouTube this only Tuesday, this Tuesday. week. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Nettie says, picked up Gen 2R for my 12 GT500 during the Black Friday sale. Nice. Uh, to go with my 56s. Um, VMP uh, fuel pump booster. Uh, 123 JLT with stock exhaust and a 2.4. Mm -hmm. What stock exhaust on your 93 tune uh, power numbers to expect? 93 Dynajet 2.4 upper Gen 2R stock exhaust. I'd say 630, 650 wheel. Um, if you had a little bit better flowing exhaust, 670, you had long tubes and like a 93 with Torco right at 700. But that's kind of like the, the happy place with those cars. And it depends on what throttle body you got on there, too. If you're still on the twin 60, it's going to limit it closer to like that 630, 640 range. So Jason is asking, what are the sweepstakes raffle odds on the refund blower kit and head units? That's a good question. Since the sale just ended, uh, we will be grabbing all the names for those who purchased and uh, putting more information out there once we do the sweepstakes. That will be early January. Uh, tune into Tuning Tuesday. That is where we will be doing the sweepstakes. We'll give you guys more information as we get closer um, and keep you posted. Let me put this in perspective. The odds are good, but they're not so good that I don't feel bad about giving away a free blower. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, share, and subscribe. It'll better your odds. It won't it'll better your odds, but <laughs> just for fun factor. Hey, we're, um, we're trying to get our subscriber count way up. So, yes, please share. And if you're not a subscriber already, subscribe. So Mad Max, who wanted to know how long will it take Joe and his crew to get through all the custom tunes, mm -hmm. said that his vehicle has been tuned by us several times already. Mm -hmm. um, we'll need an update as soon as I swap my Roush with the Gen 3 and the 69. Sweet. Um, make sure you get the tune update ordered because if you just order a blower, it doesn't automatically process a tune update order. You have to manually either add it to the order or make a separate order for a tune update for mods that were purchased from us or from someone else. And, and he's doing a Gen 3 and a 69, so he must yeah. have a, a fuel system, he must have some E85, it's got to be pretty based, bad ours. Based on his name, I think that's Max Andreev. I can't remember what exactly he's done to his car, but... Pretty serious. Yeah, if he's doing Gen 3 and 69, he's going for all of it. Woo! Because, you know, uh, what's his name? Just Gavin. Just Gavin made 900 wheel on a 79 with a Gen 3 mm -hmm. corn and long tubes. So a 69, you know, three to four pounds of boost. And it is worth noting that was with a 5%. So it was effectively oh, that's a 75. Right. That's right. But yeah, uh, mid, 69 is going to make all of it. Mid 900 wheel from a six rib and a, and a little two foot. 2.65 liter blower, can't complain about that. Yeah, got to be a lot of fun. Um, Chad Dowd says, can't brag enough about the support given by Justin, Joe, and the rest of the VMP team. Uh, awesome, Chad, Thanks, Chad. Um, glad to hear from you. I believe Max reached out to you recently. Um, nice. So looking forward to seeing what's put together. We just want to keep you racing and winning, Chad. Exactly. And Chad, you could probably send me some pictures. Um, through Facebook will work. Um, Brandon Lewis says, um, are N2MB NLS no lift shift bad? If they were bad, we wouldn't sell them. Um, when used, <laughs> when used correctly, the N2MB is perfectly fine. Remember that time I blew up the exhaust in the uh, dyno room? Yeah, when you blew out, was it one of the hoses or did you blow out one of the... The sheet metal is uh, bowed. Metal. Oh, yeah, because you hit the two-step on a car when you clutched in to let off. Rick Cacnus's car, yeah, I would clutch in before I lifted, so it would it would cut the spark, and you still have fuel in the exhaust, and it would backfire in the exhaust. It was so loud. It was like a gunshot going off. Actually, I think it's louder than a gunshot. Kind of like Andrew's car. Yeah. Okay. And it... We have, um, the old shop's got this totally ventilated dyno room, and um, there's rubber hoses that go on the tailpipes, and they go up to sheet metal in the, uh, that's attached to the ceiling, and uh, the, yeah, the sheet metal, <laughs> and my, my sheet metal guy, who's also a Mustang guy and a customer, he built that stuff out of, like, thicker than average. <laughs> like a uh, 16 or 14 gauge instead yeah. of, like, 18 or 20? Yeah, yeah. So it's all good. I just know not to do that anymore. <laughs> 
How to have a bad time. Nutty says, thank you guys. The show is awesome with your honest help. Uh, JD Roush Performance says, I'm having an issue with belt slippage on my Roush supercharger using a 72 millimeter pulley. Mm -hmm. Is there a tensioner I can get from VMP that will eliminate that? As long as your belt slip issue is because of mechanical grip loss um, or like uh, not enough tension on the, the belt to keep it to keep it gripping, um, I'd say that a tensioner could fix that. I'd look at your belt size first and confirm that the belt age isn't like too crazy old to where it's not really gripping well anymore. And you know what Joe is saying is we have this billet HD tensioner, heavy duty tensioner. It's about 15 to 20% stiffer spring and it's got a billet arm. It's a little more rigid. Um, the other option is changing idler pulleys to get a little bit more wrap. Mm -hmm. We do larger idler pulleys up top. Uh, if you do 100 millimeter, you have to grind for that. Mm -hmm. And then the third option is like a hasty bracket that moves the idler pulley over so it has the opportunity to wrap the supercharger pulley more. You just have to watch belt alignment real close when you do something like that. Mm -hmm. So Mad Max, that was talking earlier, um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you were correct in your assumption on who it is because he mm -hmm. said yes. And then he says he has the Roush uh, fuel pump booster and 1,000 cc injectors. Uh, will they support the Gen 3 and 69? They won't. Um, um, he will also be running boosting most of the time as they don't have E85 in Canada. No. Um, get with me on that setup. If you're only planning on running 93 in boosting, I would not do that with a 69 millimeter pulley. Yeah, I mean, we can, you know, boosting gives us some octane to play with. So we don't, know, I mean, uh, Gen 3 is. You don't need to put a stupid small pulley on a Gen 3. No, it's not power. like a 2300. The extra displacement of the blower and the extra efficiency and everything, it, it makes boost without much trouble. I mean, track attack on C16 on a 69 was well north of a, I want to say that was just a hair over 900 wheel. Yeah. And then we pulleyed down a little bit more to get that 1,000. But And with a big pulley on track attack, I mean, it was 800, 850. Mm -hmm. on on a gasoline based fuel yeah yeah so i'd say uh get with me on pulley size for that if you plan on running like 93 or 93 with torco for those watching um i really wouldn't if you're going to be on 93 only or 90 we'll call it 91 do a 92 millimeter pulley 93 do an 88 if you got 93 in torco you can do a 85 or 82 but an 82 is frankly pushing it um, you got to make sure you have the injector to support it, though. If you have a thousand cc and you're on a gasoline-based fuel, you can support that. Um, and you know, and that's still you've made on an 85 millimeter pulley, you've made 820 wheel on the 85. Exactly. With a Gen 3, like we're not telling you, it's just, these these big pulleys are not going to keep horsepower down. They're going to no. keep us in the real efficient range of the supercharger. They're going to keep boost low, and we can keep timing reasonable, and just everything works real good and real efficient. Yeah, tw I mean, 23, 24 pounds on an 1101 motor, trying to run a 69 or smaller is gonna. You just don't. <laughs> gonna need be a bad time on 93. Yeah, and you just you just don't need to do it to make an impressive number either. Mm -hmm. Robert has a 2012 GT500 mm -hmm. with a JLT123 and VMP 2.5 pulley uh, stock blower. While on the dyno, it stops making power at 5500 RPM. Mm -hmm. and goes flat on the curb. Could this not be enough air? So stock blower. Stock blower on a 12 GT500 with a JLT123 and VMP 2.5 pulley. I mean, they go flat about six usually, so 55 is not far off. No, 55 is not too far off. My only concern would be looking at a log to make sure he's not getting false knock or something up top. Yeah, I mean, data logs tell us everything. They tell mm -hmm. us airflow, throttle angle, timing. They tell us downstream air temps. So if your intercooler pump's not working and then you're, Yanking you know. Yanking timing out from that. Yeah, air temps skyrocket, yank timing like Joe said. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what you're saying is not out. If you're making at least 530 wheel, it's not much outside a stock blower, that's what you expect, 530 to 550 wheel on a stock blower. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe says he's having traction issues with his 14 GT500, has a Gen 3 that gets 840 to the wheel. Mm -hmm. He wants to know how wide of a wheel can he fit in the rear without modifying too much. I want to say if the backspacing and offset's right, you can get an 11.11.5 in there, but it's got to be like perfectly centered in there and your offset and backspacing has to be just close enough to where you're not too close to that uh, 
that inner fender liner and not too close to the the lip on the fender. I think Track Attack's got an 11 and a half inch wheel and a 315 is a little bit of a squeeze. A 305 is better. Mm -hmm. A 285, 295 is actually kind of narrow. Yeah, I'd say something in a 305. Try not to focus on the, the width of the tire so much as the compound that you're using and try to match it for your conditions. If the car, if it's 40, 50 degrees out where you're at, you're not going to hook up well on almost any tire. Um, most tires that hook up well hook up well above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, some of them are okay in 60s to 50s, but you start getting below that 50s mark and the, the amount of traction that the rubbers, the rubbers able to give you goes down pretty significantly. Um, so like I said, focus on compound more than width. Um, like Justin said, a 305 is probably a little bit better from a fitment standpoint than a 315, but I've seen people run both, so that's my opinion on that. <laughs> So go for Chucks. Uh, apparently bought a Gen, a VMP Gen Two, mm -hmm. uh, as is, um, and he called in to ask about it. And so he wanted to say thank you to everybody that's helped him uh, understand the Gen Two for his 08 Shelby. Awesome, great to hear. Uh, Mad Max says uh, he came back and said looking to put a 75 millimeter pulley on the Gen Three. Still want all of it. Um, <laughs> Are you above sea level by any chance? <laughs> yeah, mess, message me, Mac. We need that. Message me, Max. We need to have a more in-depth conversation about that. Um, let's see what else we have here. That someone's having a conversation. So, um, Brit, um, Bride 2K TV came back um, regarding a question that we had earlier about a conversion kit. Um, he's saying that he went to an eight rib conversion with a hundred millimeter idler pulley, mm -hmm. uh, to help eliminate belt slippage. He says VMP has a complete conversion kit. We do. And we now have a 10 rib as well. Um, Chris says, thanks for last week's advice to upgrade the 1200 SL to the 2200 SL on mm -hmm. my forged 5.6 liter three valve stroker, Thank which injectors <laughs> to run on this setup on uh, fuel pump. Uh, 91 octane and boost stain, 550 to the wheel, and 600 wheel goal. If your goal is 600 wheel with a three valve, um, if I remember correctly, you did a little bit with compression and a little bit with cams. Uh, I'd say like a, if ID still made the 725, I'd say throw a set of those in it. Um, since they don't, I'd say a ID 1050, FIC 1000, or DW95. A 56 may get you there, but just your injector duty cycle will probably be around 90, 95% at uh, around 600 wheel on a three valve. So say your better bet's a 1,000 cc injector. Um, Racer Jake says, what would you recommend Wiseco boost line rods for a Gen 2 motor if I was wanting to push over 20 PSI? Would you recommend? Those I'd would say work. they wouldn't be a bad idea. We've done well over 20 PSI on uh, mainly H-beams. I'd say those uh, Wiseco X-beams, um, they seem to be a good rod. I don't have any personal experience with them, but they should be fine at 20 pounds. Robert says, thank you guys for the info on the mm -hmm. whole team there rocks. Awesome. Thanks, man. Um, Yeti Army says, hey guys, trying to decide on a good streetable wheel tire um, that will somewhat work at the strip. On a 2009 GT500 stock suspension, uh, 700 to the wheel. Mm, if you're looking for a street strip tire, you're probably looking at like a, a drag radial. So like a Mickey Thompson ET Street, Nitto OT5R, NTO5R. Um, my go-to is an 888. And that year GT500 came with an 18-inch wheel. And I think it was a 285, 40, or 35, Yeah, 18. 285, 40, 18. So mm -hmm. height-wise, it's like a 27, 27 and a half. Even a 28-inch tire is fine. It's just the 18-inch wheel kind of, like R888, they make a lot of sizes, I believe, right? They do, but once you get over 18, the sizes become limited. All I think right. at 18, you still have a decent amount of choices, but I know that Mickey Thompson's recently come out with a lot of 
18, 19s, 20s. Yeah, they've some. It's it's funny. Like certain tire manufacturers make the big stuff. Certain ones make the small stuff. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, we have a set of uh, brand new Hoosier M and H. No, M and H drag radials mm -hmm. <laughs> in the shop. I think that are 18s. Give our uh, sales are. and support line a call, and uh, we could make you a deal on those. Big Dog wants to know: Is it true um, that 2018 Ford F one fifty trucks? with 5.0, 5 liter um, F-150 trucks, have much lower compression motors and can take much more boost than 18 Mustangs. No. No, <laughs> F-150 and Mustang are same compression. 18 up. Mustang GTs. Yeah, actually, for the first time in history, the 18 Mustang and F-150 motor is more similar than ever. Mm -hmm. Compression ratio is the same, because I think what he's talking about is the older trucks, like me and Joe's truck, 17 and older, do have lower compression, and we do mm -hmm. stuff boosting those things like crazy. Yeah. And I, he, second part of his question was, and what's at the safe limit power? I think 18 up, nobody really knows exactly what the safe limit is. No, and I think it, you really have to qualify, especially the 18s up with what fuel you're using determines what safe power is. I mean, everybody's... That high compression engine. People are throwing E85 and fuel systems in cars at a rapid pace. And then you have the people that are only going to put pump gas in them. Yeah, I'd say 12, 13 pounds is the max I'd do on pump gas. And yeah. even then I'd try to stay closer to 12 than I would 13. Slabcheck says, what's your ideal boost and timing on 93 and E85 for GT500 and GT? Um, those are two completely different setups, but... Uh, what did he say for just ideal boost and timing? Ideal boost and timing on 93 and E85. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those ones where you don't really need to answer. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't a, know that's going to benefit anyone. E85, you just run all the boosts and all the timing. Yeah. 93 on a GT500, right? GT500 GT and, and GT. GT. He wanted to know both. And he wants 93, E85, GT500, GT. It doesn't... I. Maybe maybe he's trying to decide which car to buy. But Even then, still, you can yeah. you don't quantify that by timing and boost. So I don't I don't know. Please rephrase the question <laughs> into Slapchat, something more give relevant. Give us more info. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bright UK uh, TV says any word on when the eight rib sixty nine millimeter pulleys will be in? Uh, he has one on back order. Um, so I'm privy to some of that information. Mm -hmm. The machine shop um, is run, actually I think they ran them already, and mm -hmm. I think they're on the way to paint. Um, so they should be in them within like a week. Yeah, next week they should be in sometime. So maybe check with us on like Tuesday and we'll have some better visibility into that. And if you need it by like the weekend, we can try to get it to you, priority mail or something along those lines, because definitely mm -hmm. want to get you taken care of. Yeah, but also keep in mind, six of us are gonna be gone. Yeah. Until uh, Monday. Yeah, so check with us next week because nothing's happened until then. Yep. Alexander says, I just got your Gen 3. Will the Kenny Bell 168 throttle body bolt right up? No. It will not bolt right up. And uh, we are revising our 160s and 173s to... Mm -hmm. um, I have a 160 working good on a stock, pretty much stock cam 15 to 17 car. Mm-hmm. So I have some more 160s coming into test around here, but everything's looking really good. If you want a big throttle body, I would go with ours because it doesn't have any adapter plate required or anything like that. JD Rush Performance says, from your experience on an S550, what do you think the max safe crank horsepower is? Can the internals hold up? Hold on, let's scroll down. Um, can the internals hold a thousand K crank horsepower with Roush supercharger? So a thousand K, so mm -hmm. one million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one million. Uh, that, you're right, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but uh, I think that they can they can hold nine hundred crank relatively reliably on E eighty five. Um, I don't think you'll ever get there easily with a a Roush blower. You'd have to be on like a 69, high flowing exhaust, good flowing intake, decent sized throttle body to get to that level. And I'd much rather see a car around the, right at 800 wheel 
So probably around the, right at 900 crank, I guess, 8, 870, 880 crank. Um, they seem to live a pretty decent life around there and I don't really see too many rotating assembly failures. I think I see more head gasket and head bolt stretching than I do rotating assembly failures at that level. Yeah. Um, Laza says uh, an 07 GT500 Gen 1 with 2.4 upper and 10% lower. Mm -hmm. uh, safe with FIC 1000 and VMP fuel pump booster. Off-road X and 67 millimeter throttle body on 91 with boosting. That's a pretty old school combo, Gen yeah. 1. A relatively, compared to what we're doing with Gen 2R and Gen 3 now, a low flowing setup. Yeah, I mean, those things actually, you look at like a Gen 1 versus a Gen 2R, you'll actually be down a pound or two of boost with mm -hmm. that pulley combo because it just, the inlet just doesn't flow as well. So that being said, I would run that on 93 or 91 plus boosting all day long. Yeah, I'd just like to see a higher mixture ratio of 91 and boosting just yeah. because it's, at the end of the day, it's still TBS with a 2.4 and a 10%. Yeah, run that thing a little aggressive. Mm -hmm. So it's an 07 and it only has 8,000 miles on it. Not too shabby. Wow. Uh, Yeti Army comes back, says, awesome. Thanks, guys, for the help. Um, Big Dog says, thank, guys. Much appreciated. Mad like, Max. Like, subscribe. Yep, Mad Max says, thanks, guys. You rock. So happy I met you uh, on last American Muscle Show and started my build with you. Nice. Awesome. Um... Basically, everybody's saying, thank you, awesome. Uh, the other guy. <laughs> the other guy says he's got a 13 stock GT running on 92. Mm -hmm. um, what's the max boost you can expect to run safely? Uh, 92 uh, on a Gen 2R. Apparently, he's got a Gen 2R. I wouldn't run more than 12 pounds. 82 or 79 if you really want to push it, basically. Mm-hmm. And with that said, we are caught up on questions at the moment. Awesome. So we have a big uh, pre-Christmas sale coming on a bunch of um, big and little items. Great stocking stuffers. We just launched that yesterday. So um, we can throw a link up to the blog for everybody to check out. And we've got beanies now. Oh, and yeah. Sean was asking me for a beanie. I made Rebecca wear one on the show. I didn't make I suggested Rebecca wear one on the show yesterday. We'll probably all need one. Yeah. For, uh, PRI. Yeah. Form our little heads. I'm uh Oh, Gen 3. I'm I'm not putting this on cuz it's going to mess up my hair. Oh, yeah. Joe, you don't have that problem, do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're running a little thicker there this time of year, you know. I got to. Yeah. Keeps the head warm. Yeah. And the face warm. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I'm uh I'm you're, I'm aspiring. It's, it's coming. Yep, it's coming. Yeah. It's never going to get there, though. I'm just going to be honest. Right, and you always do it right after November. JD Rush <laughs> Performance wants to know, um, will we be offering the Stage 3 MT82 Calimer transmissions? He sees that we have the Stage 1. He wants to know if we're going to offer the Stage 3. So Ben and I were talking about that because he's doing a really a lot of cool stuff with the MT82s. Um, he's, uh, he's basically building those things as fast as he can get the parts right now. Mm -hmm. So it's something we should consider. Um, you know, it's it's always tough for a small business with a new product like that to meet demand, keep the manufacturing and the R and D and the tooling costs in check. There's a lot of things to balance, but that's some good market feedback. They want the transmission. Yeah. Um, brick. Brick 2K TV, Bry 2K TV wants to know if he can have a beanie with a 69 millimeter pulley when it comes in. Um, talk to our sales and support department. <laughs> Depends on how long you've been waiting. Yeah. And um, we're caught up on questions right now. Awesome. So what else is going on? When are we going to dyno your GT500? I know we've been talking about that for a while, but I know... I, every this time, happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. And then... I've been sucked into the PRI build for two weeks, and I actually reviewed the footage and handed it over to Chris right before the show. So it's like it's coming to a stopping point. So, yeah, it's time to hop back on my own car, and we're getting a lot of cold days. Yeah. Load that sucker up with C16 again and run it. Yeah. Make a number with long tubes. And are we talking about track attack stuff? 
Um, yeah, we can talk about that. Okay. We have a full built rotating assembly for track attack. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we have enough fuel system parts laying around here now. <laughs> yeah, we can put a fuel system in it and go yeah. full send again. Yeah, and then I think we should like sell the car. It's a unique one of one built motor, 1,000 rear wheel horsepower street car. Cervini's custom, did some awesome stuff with it. Yeah, custom paint and graphics. So um, get out your checkbooks because we need a new dyno building and selling that car would pay for a good chunk of it. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Yeti Army says any cool builds that do we have going on right now? Um, obviously, Rebecca's new build will be at PRI, so if anybody's going to be at PRI, go to our booth, 2725, and be sure to check it out. Yeah, billet specialties, TRZ, a a suspension, all stepped up um, this year to really make uh, Rebecca's car happen. And uh, it was at PR, PR, uh, PRI last year, it was bad to the bone, it is even batter to the bone now. That's what I was going to say is last year uh, it was pretty cool but they've done some sweet upgrades to it through the year and it's even nicer. And, and the exciting thing is when it comes home from PRI like the next step is to like start wiring it. Like we are going to have a running car next yeah. year which Joe was giving me some shit about. So <laughs> I wasn't giving you too about. much shit about yeah. it. No you weren't. I, just, I was just like we can't have a car go to PRI three years without running no. like it needs to run next year it's gonna run down a freaking racetrack next, <laughs> next year hell yeah um so we have that bill going on carrie what were you gonna say uh, no nothing i was waiting for you to finish um, i have some more questions coming in and uh anyways we'll, we'll use that shop build stuff after more filler after the questions okay uh akdmb mm. says have you guys seen bad gas lean out a car um well, was tuning a single cylinder f SAE car with a Motec standalone. Couldn't get mm -hmm. the car to go rich enough at watt. Swapped to fresh fuel and then the car ran rich. What is that? If the gas has water in it, it'll do that shit? Um, I guess so, because if, technically if you burn water, you're creating <laughs> oxygen, which will lean out the O2 sensor. But uh, I don't know. Like bad fuel is like a mystery that like we know it exists, but there's like low octane bad fuel and then there's where all the um, octane additives have uh, I'm trying to think of what they call that. Light ends? Yeah, the, well, like, you have HES fuel for testing. Right. Like, what exactly comes out of fuel to make it HES fuel? Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, basically, the light hydrocarbons just evaporate. So that makes one type of bad fuel. And then you've got contaminated fuel. You've got fuel that's maybe degraded in such a way it doesn't burn right. Cause what does it turn into, like, varnish or something if you wait long enough? I imagine it does. You see the horror stories of, like, gas tanks that had fuel sitting in them for, like, four years on the Internet. Yeah. And uh, there's all kinds of bad fuel, so it's hard to really say exactly yeah. what your situation is. The only thing I would say is that if you had fuel that was so bad it was somehow misfiring, that would cause it to show as lean on a wide band, and then putting fresh fuel in may correct the misfire and then show rich. But Yeah, that's true. It's hard to say. Um, Slab Shack, who was asking earlier about the timing mm -hmm. um, that different fuels allow on GT and, and GT 500s. Yeah. He says he's asking because people want more boost and don't consider the amount of timing that different fuels allow. He says, I have a 14 GT 500, but a GT mm -hmm. guy may also want to know. 10-4. Um, it really depends on, like you said, the boost in the fuel. So to, I don't really want to give a global answer is to gasoline this boost around this amount of timing because good quality 93 takes different timing that bad quality 93 does and then you got 91 and i guess if we're doing round numbers s550 11 pounds safe timing 17 18 degrees good quality fuel you can run 19 to 23 depending on whether or not it's in cap protection um gt500 would you say 18, 19 pounds on 93 is kind of where you want to be? Yeah. Yeah. You know I, mean? a, I know there's guys that run more, but. If it's a low compression 5, 4 on mm -hmm. 93, we could run a tad more. But yeah, that's and a then, good place to be. And then at that level, like 14 to 16 degrees without really worrying about fuel quality, if you have good quality 93, as much as like 17, maybe 18. Yeah, especially um, if your boost is a little bit lower. And then E85, we'll call it 22, 23 pounds. 
and 20 degrees on a GT500 and then a 5 liter E85, no more than really 15 or 16 pounds, quote unquote, safely, and then 20 to 21 and a half, 22 degrees. So head you really flow, want to go full send. Head flow is so good on five liters that you know you just put boost to them. They just keep making power. Yeah. And they keep making a lot of power. Yeah. So safely, that's why I was kind of laughing. Yeah, that and that compression, it helps so much. Yeah. Compression like feeds power when the octane's available and the corn's mm -hmm. available. You see tuning so many cars like Joe and I have tuned, you see so many different modifiers to that you know path to making horsepower yeah it's really it's it's very hard to quantify them and then you've got timing tolerance with different um, cam phasing and then timing tolerance based on how you ramp in the timing mm -hmm. there's so much to it but that hopefully gives you a little bit of insight into you know the ballpark of what we do and then anyone else that was wondering now knows too so Craig says, I just got my Gen 3, can't wait to get it on my GT500, and will you guys be at Ponies in the Smokies? We will, Craig, and um, if you want to do a dyno tune there, let us know within the next couple weeks, because I'm just setting up the schedule for uh, next year. Right to KTV says, y'all going to come out west sometimes, he's in Phoenix. It's hard to get out there, other than, you know, well, the SEMA show, which we didn't do this year. Yeah, and even then we don't really do uh, like any type of dyno or racing while we're there. It's just yeah. us interacting with people at the show. Uh, Coyote Chris says, do you have an idea when the 18 BMP supercharger will come out to play? We are uh, working on development of that, and it will be early to mid next year. I love when we have regulars that come on and answer <laughs> questions, only because... <laughs> Bry2KTV says, Coyote Chris, previous video said sometimes next year. Nice. So, um, that's not late nice. next year. Shows us that people that are long. paying attention. But yeah. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, and yeah, you'll, you'll be up to date. Mm -hmm. um, Peyton says, since we're talking about fuel, mm -hmm. do you guys have a preferred station to get fuel at? Shell, BP, etc.? I like what would be considered top tier fuels, but a thing I also like is high turnover rate. I don't know if you can get in touch with your local fuel distributors. That's not gas stations, that's the people that actually make the fuel for the gas stations and bring it to them in the tankers. If you can get a hold of a fuel distributor, try and find out who gets the highest turnover on whatever fuel you use and uh, then grade it by tier of fuel and then kind of go to that that station that's local to you. And then the final thing is consistency. You know, mm -hmm. at least if you're always running the same fuel, your car gets data logged and gets tuned for that, you know, level of knock tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, I always go to the same gas station. Go and same I, like, uh, I like Phillips, not the five bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, five bucks, because in my mind, I don't know if this is actually how it works, but with, a, with most gas stations, at least down here, you have one pump, one hose, for technically two fuels or a blend of two fuels. So to me, if you're only putting five bucks or 10 bucks in, so we'll say two or three gallons, how many of those two or three gallons are a mix of the fuel that was pumped in before you started fueling? And somebody online was talking about that. It's not as big of an issue as one would think, but there's mm -hmm. gotta be some dilution. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause you've got, the, you've got five to 10 feet of hose before any pump mechanism. And it's at least a three quarter inch hose. So just talking from a volume standpoint, yeah. a three quarter inch hose, 10, 15 feet long, you're talking at least a gallon. Yeah. Unless they're finding a way to drain the hose after the pump. I'll tell Which, you out west, they've mm -hmm. got those hoses that siphon the fumes away as you pump. Have you ever used one of those? I have not. California, Arizona, um, Vegas, Nevada area. But so there's some crazy technology, but there's some realistic stuff of, yeah, I don't know how they're gonna pump the fuel out of the hose. Yeah, so what I was getting cars. at there is, if you're going to put gas in it, fill it up. Yep, fill it up. Yeah. All right. Brandon says, Brandon wants to know, what tuning device do you prefer to tune with? Ooh. Any that gets the job done. <laughs> um, I've used both on all of my vehicles, and both being the two that we most commonly use, uh, SCT and Engage. Um, and that's devices, because there's multiple methods of getting a file into a car. 
Um, with SCT, you have only the device method, but with HP tuners, you can do direct flash with cable, or you can do a, a flash for N-gauge. Um, and I'd say for most end users, the SCT or the N-gauge makes the most sense. If you're a avid enthusiast that's um, very analytical and really wants to do things themselves and learn how everything works, then the, uh, the HP setup is probably your best bet. Um, they're doing a lot for adding support and for making sure that definitions are there so that you can at least get some idea of what, uh, what you're changing is going to do before you change it. Um, am I safe running a 2.4 on a Gen 2 R mm -hmm. on a 12 GT500 on 93 or should I pull you up? Uh, 2.4 on a Gen 2 R on 93 should be fine. No problem there. Coyote for the win says, are you guys planning anything on the western side of the country, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona? I know, Texas 2K. I we might be out to Texas next year. We're still figuring that out. Yeah, we've got to figure out where, where we're going. Um, iClutch says, I have an order in processing that is basically the 13,900 horsepower kit. Mm-hmm. Um, without the VMP tune. I was thinking mm -hmm. of switching to y'all's tune if it's simple to tune through VMP. It's, it's a setup we tune pretty commonly in that, that kit that you're referring to. We actually sold a lot of those on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So it's a... Uh, we sold a lot. We're working through the, the what we'll call backlog of getting all that stuff out. Um, but from a tuning standpoint, that's very simple. I don't know who's currently tuning your car, but we're more than capable of tuning that setup. So this is something we talk about like internally because we do a, a ton of tunes, but we also wonder how well educated are our customers externally on the tuning process, and you know what are their expectations and stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I guess I could kind of you know walk through tuning with VMP real quick. So we have dynos. So, so basically, tuning with us is you're going to be, get access to our wealth of knowledge from the dyno, from the racetrack, from the street. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yep. Um, many of these combinations we've tuned a bazillion times before. We're going Especially to, the kits, like what he's referring yeah, to. Yeah, I mean... That's we, why we have the kit. <laughs> uh, we were tuners before we made superchargers. Um, mm -hmm. All the parts and stuff and the superchargers we make simply came out of our desire to make more horsepower and make it uh, reliably consistently and cost effectively. So we started making our own supercharger kits. Um, th that being said, the tuning process is knowing what's done to your car, knowing the fuel, the pulley size. Those are kind of some of our fixed variables. Um, the big thing is knowing what you want. Because we can manage a lot of expectations or help you get to more realistic expectations right up front before, before you even order, frankly if we just know what you want at the end of the day. And that's, you know, what you want. like the notebook. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want power-wise? What you want sound-wise? What your budget is? We can recommend the right combination of parts. Mm -hmm. And once we've gotten past that, then we send you a bass tune, which is set up properly for your configuration. And that bass tune is, like, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to get a bass tune and then... I'm going to data log it, send it back to him, and then my car is going to pick up 100 horsepower on the second tune. Not necessarily. No, we do this for a living. The tune that we send out, I like to say, is like 95 to 99%. Mm -hmm. And everything from there is dialing in that last couple percent. Mm -hmm. And the big thing is troubleshooting for installation problems. <laughs> Not, it seems to be not so much on GT500s as it is 5 liters because when you're doing something like the Gen 3 or Gen 2 R, you're not, I mean, you're changing quite a bit, but you're not really changing quite a bit. Like with a 5 liter, you're adding a heat exchanger and you've never burped a cooling system before and you've never done wiring into an IET before. So it's... At least with GT500, you're already supercharged. Exactly. Um, but like you said, a lot of what we do via email is uh, email diagnostics, yeah. as sad as it is. I wish, and, I wish there was a separate product per, per tune file we send you to try and diagnose what's wrong with your car. You get charged X amount of dollars. I mean, really, our skill is in selling you the right combination of parts, knowing what works tuning-wise, 
and knowing how to help you be successful mm -hmm. remotely without actually being there in person. And I hear from other tuners all the time, oh, I don't touch mail order tuning. And I, I've realized we're actually really good at mail order tuning because we know what everything looks like when it goes right. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we know when something's wrong. Mm -hmm. We hopefully know. We can get to that um, troubleshoot and find what's wrong. Because we and know- I think that gives us a competitive edge. It does give us a huge like, competitive edge. If someone, a, a knowledgeable installer always installs it correctly, but say the customer installs all of his own parts, brings it to him to dyno tune, and now he has to try and figure out what the customer did wrong to screw this up. And it's like, since we do it so much via email, I kind of know what it looks like when someone has a throttle body gasket leak or a, a loose uh, oil separator or... They slipped the cold air on and the coupler's leaking on the underside because they just didn't happen to check for that. Or when they sure put the math in backwards. <laughs> math in backwards. Like, there's multiple, multiple permutations of things that can go wrong. Like, mm -hmm. we've somehow mapped them all out. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real skill comes in because we've built all the tune files before. We know they work. If mm -hmm. they don't work, we have to start looking for reasons why. Mm -hmm. um, so... Brighter K TV has a good point from the standpoint of not only like, share, and subscribe, but if you click on the bell um, to get the notification so that that way you know when new content is dropped on YouTube. That way you'll uh, be in the first to know. You can watch me and Joe every week. <laughs> we can snuggle. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, bro. Ooh. Oh, Joe. Ooh. Bro love. Everyone just get under your covers and watch us do the thing. Okay, so Lou, <laughs> Lou says, if you go as far as building an S550 engine, is it a benefit to overboarding for more displacement? No. No, unless you're going to go significantly over, don't, don't bother. Unless you're trying to do some like, yeah, you do some like wicked like valve untrouting, big bore type stuff. Just keep your engine build simple. Less can go wrong that way. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, good times. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> People like to get things too complicated. We're being asked if you provide tuning support for mm -hmm. the four Whipples on a GT500. We do. We do. We tune. We tune everything GT500. Like that's definitely one of our uh, uh, tons of experience. I've been working on them since they came out in 2006. Justin had one. Has. Yes. Yeah. Still. <laughs> Sold the original, but ha still have one. I've, 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 yeah, I've had every major generation of GT500, 07 to 09, 10 to 12, 11 to 12, and 13, 14. Yep. Big Dog says one final question. Ordered a 2.9 Whipple for my 18 Ford F-150 5.0 mm -hmm. with a smaller pulley. Mm -hmm. uh, 775 horsepower with full length headers, high flow cats. Mm -hmm. Three inch full dual exhaust on 93 pump. Mm -hmm. He wants to know if his vehicle is going to hold up. <laughs> if you're just cruising around town it should be fine if you're going water a lot i mean the chance of bad things happening go up but uh say 775 wheel on 93 is pretty pretty dumb not like from a you shouldn't do that standpoint but like a what the <laughs> <laughs> that number seems a little off but uh yeah i mean have fun with it it'll last uh. as long as it's gonna last I has piston says, is there an approximate lifespan of stock GT500 cats with a TVS blower? Um, I would say at reasonable boost levels, 18 pounds and below, good fuel system. That we found the lifespan to be pretty good. I mean, yeah, I don't know about like wash coat lifespan at the higher power levels, but the the cat durability standpoint seems to be pretty good. You know, on five liters, it's not great, but they have other little issues that I think. Uh, not being factory supercharged, the fuel system's not as good. GT500, I mean, we've passed emissions. We've done all the emissions testing and passed on GT500 with mm -hmm. our superchargers and our tuning. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm working on the whole Carbio deal. Um, yeah. I know people like to give us, or not people, but very specific people like to give us shit on the internet about that. But it's like we've done the testing. We just have to yeah. finish all the other stuff. We own all the data. <laughs> Uh, Peyton wants to know what percent of tunes do we do that are on coyote swaps? Uh, le that's what we call level X. Um, most of the time that's coyote swaps or very aggressive 5 liter setups on 11 to 14 cars. 
I'd say that that's about, I mean, it's gone up a lot. Within the last couple of quarters, probably about 10% of what we do is level X or coyote swap. And those are definitely a big understanding exactly how the coyote swap's done, tuning for that, and then troubleshooting it. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people think uh, a 320 liter per hour pump is going to take them a lot further than it actually will with a boosted coyote. Because <laughs> it's like, I'd say at least half of the tune orders I get for coyote blower stuff with level X, they have 320s and I'm like, yeah, that's... This isn't, cut it. this isn't like the original push rod five liter days where you throw a 255 wall bro in it and you got the best fuel pump out there. Exactly. <laughs> no, no more. Taylor says, can I safely run on a 2.8 or 2.6 pulley on a Whipple 2.9 with my GT500 on 93 octane tune? Relatively. Um, and that's only because the GT500 is low compression. But even then, that's... Yeah, it's definitely pushing it. I mean, if the throttle body is a little bit smaller, the peak boost is going to be a little bit lower. Yeah. You know, we'll get in there and we'll data log it and we'll tune it and keep the timing reasonable. Because mm -hmm. we can see airflow and load and everything, excuse me, when we're tuning it. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, we are caught up on questions. You have about eight minutes left. Shop builds. Oh, gosh. So there's an 18 F-150. Mm -hmm. with a Cobra Jet Manifold on it that mm -hmm. we're, Joe and I have been playing around with. Um, what else is there going on in the shop? I know there's a couple cars that are like here for the next month for everything from motor swaps to... Yeah, we just did headers on a, a guy 17 GT yesterday. In and out headers for a local guy like in a day, we day wanted and a half. the dyno tune. Mike did that this morning? Mike did that this morning. Um, yeah, Donnie really came through with that customer. Donnie's been busting his ass in the shop the past couple weeks, mm -hmm. past week or so, to get cars in and out. Because he's driving to the PRI show right now. <laughs> Hi, Donnie. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else is going on in the shop? And what, what do we have? A, do we have a car we did on? What's that car on Facebook, Max? The GT350? Yeah. The shifter install, mm -hmm. MGW. Reminds me of my GT350, which also yeah. had a MGW. Isn't that MGW. like lead foot or something like that instead of the Avalanche? I think that's like a 17 or an 18 GT350. Yeah. Car. I think it was a GT350R. Okay. What's the uh, ETA foot. on truck stuff? Truck stuff, it's in the works. Okay. I was going to tell them ETA. It's in the works. <laughs> Joe's truck install videos, I guess you guys are talking about. Uh, the... I would be talking about the Texas stuff, but definitely the install stuff is, or not Texas. God, we were talking about Georgia. The, the Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Model yeah. International. And yeah. some of the wheel hop stuff that we're going to okay. do as well. Yep, yep. Cool. It's on the list. It's in the orders, yes. A couple things came in before it, so. Did Dorian chime in today? Or is Dorian No, I have way? not seen Dorian, but usually he's on Facebook, and with Facebook being down, maybe he didn't make it over to YouTube. I see. A um, couple of things. Joshua says, I ordered a 79 millimeter pulley for my Gen 2R uh, on a 14 GT. I just received it in the mail, but it looks mm -hmm. different than the one picture. Did we change the design of the pulley by chance? We are we updating all of our pulleys to look more bad arse. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have an easy to read size on them and some little cosmetic changes. I'll get you after. Um, Dirty D says, looking to swap uh, 373s to 331s. Does it matter if the housing is iron or aluminum? Um, What's the story on that? So to me, if you don't get wheel hop, it don't matter. Yeah. I've seen, like we had a Jean Grey, the red... 15 GT. We had an aluminum diff in that thing at like 900, 870 wheel for a long time. And the only time we ever had problems with diff or anything inside the diff was when we got wheel hop. And the aluminum is what, 25 to 30 pounds lighter? I'd say at, at least 25 pounds. Maybe if I was pounds. building a race car, a fast street car or a race car, I would want lightweight aluminum parts in it and proper suspension to keep it from wheel hopping. And by that same token, 03 or 04 Cobra aluminum diff. Yeah. You didn't have problems unless you got wheel hop. Yeah. So Adam um, wants to see a dyno video of 0304 Cobra um, with a Gen 3. We are actually working to put something together um, that will probably be more than just 
one simple dyno pull. Yeah, so. we're doing a compilation and like Gen 3 power discussion and analysis and everything. So yeah, yes. there's a lot of data out there now. So I feel like uh, a lot of people are skeptical without dyno videos. I need a video of it on the dyno, even mm -hmm. though we already released the graphs for it. Yeah, dyno graphs and everything. We didn't like the, the angle or the quality of the, the video, so we never posted it, but the, <laughs> if the video doesn't exist, then it never happened, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, Dirty D says, will I crack the aluminum with my manual? Uh, He's the same one that was looking to swap on um, 373s to 331s. I'd say that there's a possibility that you can crack it, but you can crack an iron block, or not iron block, you can crack the iron diff. Um, but I would say that the reason that Ford put the iron diff in the manual cars is because if it ever gets wheel hop, the durability of it's just a tiny bit better. Uh, Big Dog came back. He's the one that's getting the 2.9 Whipple for his 18 Ford F-150. Yeah. Um, 775 horsepower. He said uh, she's going to be installed by a professional performance shop with a custom tune, upgraded fuel system, dual pump also. Okay, so that's the, the crank horsepower quote. Mm. I thought he was saying he already got it installed and it was 775. Okay. But yeah. And we've got an engine, a uh, short block assembly video with me and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It's already done. It's going to be coming out soon. Just got to find a little bit more footage for that. Yeah. There's a number of things that are coming up. Um... The manifold installs? Yeah, we're going to do more we'll manifold testing, uh, ported truck manifold testing, 18 engine manifold testing, more Cobra Jet testing, everything. Because you know what? Every other week, that is a dramatic topic on Facebook. And I love how they post just the... Um, just the screenshots of the graphs. Yeah. None of the, none of the talk about each setup and what it did and what we like and what we don't like. It's that just... Area under the curve. No, it's just the peak number. Yeah. <laughs> um, some other things that are coming. We have a F-150 rear differential teardown, which will be interesting mm. from the VMP. Mod Motor National Carnage. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Little tiny spider gears. But not just teardown, <laughs> rebuild. We'll be doing that as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple more questions uh, or things. Um, so I have Pistons wants to know if you go, you'll do a toolbox tour at some point. Um, Peyton says, do you guys have any more footage of the 70 Mustang Coyote swap? I have a 1970 Mustang. I'm in the process of swapping, so really uh, curious about that build. I think that car's on its way to Japan now, unfortunately. I think he's talking about uh, Daniel's car. Oh, okay. Because <clears throat> um, the other one, I think, was a uh, 69. But yeah, um, is, do you ask him he, if he just wants like pictures of the engine bay or something? Is he like, talking about Daniel's out. car or is he also talking about possibly the SEMA car too? From Spectre Racing. I think that he's talking about uh, Daniel's car. Because we released that video probably like what, a week ago? Of, we did uh, and we also did 70 a Mach. story fairly recently on the SEMA car that Spectre Racing had also. Okay. So, uh, Peyton, let us know. Are you talking about the black car or are you talking about the avalanche gray car? Um, I'm talking about the black one. So, yes, Daniel's car. Okay. Yeah, we have some more engine bay photos and stuff if you need it on that car. But uh, I think that's all the video footage we got of it in the video that we posted. Yeah, we just got mm. on the dyno. Mm -hmm. um, um, Bright 2 ktv says, thanks, guys, for another great live feed. See you next week. This is the best way to spend my Tuesday lunch at work. Oh, well, thank you. Awesome, man. Which is so, right here. it's two thirty. Yep. Does about that, that bring us to a close, Carrie? That ran us to a close. We are done. Awesome. So make sure you check out our Texas Mile vlog video and some of our other produced videos. Buy some beanies off the website. They're shipping out. They're hot. We got a hundred of them. Like half of them are gone already. And um, please like, like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications so that that way you can um, stay up to date. And we will be running some contests here soon um, for viewership and engagement. So please be sure to keep an eye on our social media channels. Cool. Do the thing. Subscribe, hit that subscribe button, like our videos. We'll do more of them if you do. Bye guys. Bye everybody. Bye.